So, hello everybody. I'm here with Alienor Lalu, and she's from the sustainability team. Uh, we are, uh, that is the team we are uh, starting to know today. And I'm very happy to be with you, Eleanor. And so I will, I would ask you to present yourself. Hello. So after studying uh, in a French engineering school, ESPCI, I did a master thesis in machine learning and joined the team of Sony uh, for a, an internship where I worked on plant segmentation that David presented. And then uh, we wanted to continue in a PhD uh, with a as a topic a bit uh, a bit different, so we contacted many laboratories and met with the ENS uh, chemistry team of Ludovic Julien and Thomas Le Sault, who work on fluorescence. And we decided to do a, a PhD thesis uh, of uh, early stage uh, research on plant diagnosis using fluorescence. Okay, thank you. So you are working on uh, plant diagnosis and. Um, is it a side project in CSL or, it, or is it um, linked to what we have just uh, so outside, so the, to the robot development uh, in the lab? Okay, so the project will be a bit far away, but our, on the long-term objective is that one day we can put the device we, pre we prepare on the robot. Um, and uh, the way it would work is that the robot sends light on the plants. Then the plants emit fluorescence and collecting this information the robot will compare it to a database and be able to do a status analysis. For example, say this plant needs water, or this plant is under pest attack, or this plant needs fertilizer. And maybe the robot will, will be able to act directly or tell the farmer that it's time to, to, to act. So, good. Great. And um, so, if I understood well, you collect the plant fluorescence, <clears throat> to get a diagnosis of the, um, of the status of the plant. Is it correct? Yeah. And, yeah. and um, what, um, where does it come from? Okay, so it's actually a natural uh, process. And if we want to understand, uh, we have to look at the, the root process that allow plants to grow, which is photosynthesis. So photosynthesis allows the plant to capture uh, gas, uh, mm -hmm. CO2, and takes electrons from the water to uh, fuel the, the photosynthetic chain and make uh, sugars using the energy okay. of light. So what happens is that inside the leaf, you have uh, chloroplasts, and in the chloroplasts, you have uh, what is called thylakoids, which are filled with pigments. Okay. So these pigments, they absorb the light energy and transfer it to a reaction center where the photosynthesis happens, which the light energy is converted into chemical energy. Okay. However, the antenna cannot control how much energy they get. So if it's a morning, not too much sunlight, mm -hmm. uh, they capture um, uh, uh, a light energy that matches the capacity of photosynthesis. But when it's later in the day, at noon, you have full shade, uh, full uh, sunlight, and they receive too much energy. So to avoid damage, they release this energy uh, through uh, two processes, either heat or fluorescence. So that's really interesting for us because we can measure the light of fluorescence. Oh, okay. And so what happens really is that we look into the ways of photosynthesis. But if you think about it, you can learn a lot from uh, looking into uh, a trash can. Let's say I look into your trash and I find a vegetable, uh, um, and also pizza, of course. <laughs> <laughs> then I can say that you're healthy. But if I can only find tissues and med boxes, not a lot of food, then I will okay. know that you are sick. So. There's a lot we can learn from, from waste. Oh, this is really uh, amazing. Uh, and uh, has fluorescence already been used to probe, to probe the um, health status of a plant? Uh, yes, it has been used. It's not okay. new. It has been used for a lot of years. And there are several methods. What we want to introduce is a new method to look at it. Okay. So uh, for now, what we do is uh, look at the photosynthesis under several... Um, um, uh, when the chain is uh, under several stresses and mm -hmm. compare the levels and extract information, for example, how many photons are converted into photosynthesis and how many are lost. But what we want to look at is uh, the kinetic dynamic response of the photosynthesis. Like uh, when you excite it at different frequencies, uh -huh. uh, how it responds. And what we want to do is probe specific steps of the photosynthetic step to have more understanding of what's happening. So what are the advantages of it? 
but we're doing a dynamic analysis, so we, we, we target specific steps. And also it has a high signal to noise ratio due mm -hmm. to the frequency analysis method. And it will be easy to implement on, on fields and can be used outdoors. And we want to rely on machine learning to do classification of the signatures and understanding. So from this, we will be able to get a diagnosis uh, mm -hmm. uh, analysis, but we can also select strains like to see how they behave in certain circumstances. And maybe what we want to do is optimize growth condition. In other words, minimize the amount of waste yeah. you find in the trash to be sure that it's com completed into sugars. Okay. Uh, so to do this, introduce a new method is not that easy. So the first step was to build an instrument. Then to be sure that our instrument was uh, trustworthy, so we produced the experiments from the literature. And then with partners with the same sample, compare the same experiment at the same time. Yeah. And finally publish a paper to show, uh, to pr uh, present our instrument to the, the community. And finally we can work on the idea. So for the first year of my PhD, I tried, I worked on building the instrument mm -hmm. and at Sony and ENS, uh, we always start from scratch. So okay. we built uh, the, the microscope from, uh, from zero. It consists in uh, several light sources that we inject into um, uh, the setup and we can collect we, a light on the sample and collect the fluorescence and use either a camera or a photon counter to, to get, uh, acquire data. So, these are the, some uh, images that we acquire. We can okay. look at plants and we can also look at algae. And actually we will focus on algae because it is the um, uh, um, typical organism to study photosynthesis. Okay. And here, for example, you can see a, a video of uh, our, um, sorry. Uh, of, uh, okay, it doesn't work. Of, uh, our algae trapped in a microscopic trap, so the size of a, of a hair, okay. and we can look at them one by one. Wow. And what we wanted to do is uh, really uh, only light one at, uh, at the same time, uh, at, at, at a time. So uh, we worked on the, setup, on the setup, and since we made it from scratch, it's really easy to uh, adapt. So what we did here is... Uh, replace our manual platform with an automated one. So with 3D printing and motors and an Arduino, we can control uh, our, se our setup and look at uh, each trap one after the other. Yes. And uh, I mean, wh what are the advantages of building up, of building uh, a new setup by yourself? Okay, so the first is uh, you can modify it. And another advantage yeah. is that you, you can completely control it and make it automatic. So we use a Python for automation and it allows to reduce human error and increase reproducibility of our experiments. Also, we put all our data in a, in a database mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, everything is stored with the, all the experimental parameters. So let's say we do our experiments and then in, in five months, we have an idea that we want to test. We can reuse all the previous uh, material. And actually, it was not easy to find a, a, a way to implement this. It seems that it's not so common. So I had to adapt yeah. a, a platform for machine learning to uh, my laboratory uh, experiments. OK. OK. Nice. Then the next step was to reproduce uh, uh, results from the literature. I will not go into details, but we showed them to the results. These are three types of experiments, and okay. we showed them to um, uh, by experts in biophysics, and they said that they were completely uh, relevant and uh, reproduced correctly the literature. And then uh, with our colleagues, we took uh, the same sample of algae, and the same day did the same experiment, and mm -hmm. we uh, managed to find uh, very similar results which was saying you can now try to, to work uh, on, uh, on, the, on the, the instrument for other questions. So if we wanted to publish, we had to find a new, a new question that we could tackle with our instrument. And what we decided to do was to study the distribution of a population. Usually um, when, uh, when we study uh, samples, mm -hmm. we look at the mean of the response. But here, what we wanted to do is to isolate each individual algae and get their own response and then uh, look at how they, the dis dispersion of the response yeah. was. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next step will then to be uh, to work on the, the method. The method, yeah. okay. <laughs> so it seems to me you are very enthusiastic about this project. And so I just, uh, I would ask you, uh, how did you, how it was working on the project? 
Um, it's, a, it's really interesting because it's very pluridisciplinary. There's optics, computing, biology, and it, um, it allows me to interact with a lot of people. And I had a lot of, of luck to fall on Sony and ENS because they already have uh, a lot of knowledge and also a lot of uh, contacts. Yeah. So I get to meet a lot of, uh, of people. Yeah. Okay. And um, how is uh, your experience of the lab? Um, <laughs> It's, a, it's quite funny, so I, I, w I was more used to work with um, computer science mm -hmm. and um, working with biology materials, it's quite hard because it's hard to uh, anticipate how it behaves and it's hard to cultivate and, and there's a lot of, um, of, um, of unexpected uh, uh, conditions that happen, but it allows you also to find uh, unexpected uh, results. Uh, it's a really unpredictable uh, system, and uh, and we find uh, we find things that we didn't expect, okay. thanks to the instrument. Great. So thank you, Eleanor, and uh, thank you for giving us uh, such a deep insight on the um, on the topic. And so this was our last interview uh, of the day, and I just want to. Thank everybody who was following the, our live, live stream program during these three days. And um, I will uh, just say that at 15, we will uh, have uh, um, another moment to stay together. And so I thank you and I will wait for you at 15. Bye.